Jin. Welcome back to Entrepreneurship Tuesday. My name is Michelle Ashira at Y254 channel. Is where you can follow us across all our social media handles. Uh, head to our Facebook page that is at Y254 channel and we have a question for you. And the question goes like, would you rather save money to purchase a product or anything that of your interest or take a loan but uh, then get to pay it slowly i would like to hear your comments and what you are, what are your thoughts on that so head on to our facebook page that is at y254 channel at michelle ashira is where you can reach out to me if you want to get personal at entrepreneurship tuesday is where you can find us so use the hashtag entrepreneurship tuesday also so let's uh, get just dive into this particular interview that we have uh, for you right now we're all about talking about um, home based catering business so i am sure that there's no like a fire recipe for a successful home catering uh, uh, services or even a, bi a business on that matter so but all that matters is just a dash of determination and grace that will take you by so for the lovers of uh, food <laughs> and uh, especially when it comes to cakes this is a conversation that you want to stick around and uh, listen listen into it and if you also want to get into this particular business that is catering so this is the conversation for you at michelle ashira at y254 channel is where you can uh, you can find us and my guest today is dolin mura very young entrepreneur in her early 20s she'll be taking us through what it takes to start a home based uh, catering business and if you love definitely if you love the idea of cooking and uh, baking this is the place where you should stick around so Dolly Murad thank you very much for creating time to be with us thank you for hosting me too and uh, so before we actually even get to, to dive into uh, this particular conversation about uh, baking about uh, just like a home-based catering services and how different that is. I'd like to find out who uh, Dolin Mora is. Who is Dolin Mora? Someone who is watching. Yeah, I'm Dolin Mora. I'm a financialist by profession. Mm -hmm. I'm a young entrepreneur trying to make life meet. Mm -hmm. I'm a Christian. All right. Yeah. So uh, from uh, that sh uh, short bio that you've given us, mm -hmm. what you what you missed out to mention is the fact that you have uh, uh, done a couple of uh, ventures before you settled for home-based uh, catering business. Probably you can start from uh, a couple of uh, business ventures that you've been you have done before, and then we can get into uh, matters pertaining like uh, uh, home home catering business? Well, I've run a fashion shop mm -hmm. on CBD Nairobi, have done farming, have done, um, you know, a bit of writing, mm -hmm. and now I moved to baking. All right, so yeah. is it okay if I call you a serial entrepreneur? It's <laughs> fine, <someone>? it's fine. <laughs> Let's find out well, what time or uh, what particular time within your, uh, your life did you start uh, the Dolin Empire? And what inspired it? I started wearing campers, mm -hmm. and, you know, doing a random shopping. I would move from school, go shop, come sell at school. Mm -hmm. Then as I was approaching winding campers, then now I got a small shop. I started at that point. Mm -hmm. At 2019, then now I got a bigger space and it has been running till now. Okay, one thing that you've uh, uh, you've stated then that actually stood out for me, and uh, we have also some section of uh, students, uh, uh, some of the students who actually get into business while in campus. Mm -hmm. But majority of students uh, have been wired in a way that they believe uh, they go to school, get education, mm -hmm. get the skills, and wait for an employment. And uh, unfortunately, in most cases, it doesn't happen that way. Uh, what drove you into starting your own business while still being in school as a third year student? Uh, for me, I you know I don't come from such a rich family, so we had bills in school 
to to do you may paperwork to do you have things that you need to print mm -hmm. at times you don't have this money and mm -hmm. i was in a private campus i was on a, a scholarship a bit but then my parents also chipped in so i decided what can i do f on my free time despite we had days that we didn't have classes mm -hmm. so i basically didn't want to sit around and you know how campus can be sometimes there's pressure you may find yourself not doing so good uh character wise so i decided to do okay yeah all right now dolin empire now uh Dali Mora mm -hmm. uh, started uh, a catering business how did that happen how how did that transition take place uh it hap it happened on march around march as we were approaching april uh my fashion shop wasn't doing so well so i decided what can i do i have been having passion for baking i could bake small cakes for my family my friends and stuff so i decided why can't i do this mm -hmm. i decided to do so especially because this time of covid mm -hmm. people are eating a lot so i decided to bake <laughs> Thinking like an entrepreneur, yeah. looking for opportunities. So, uh, how did you learn to uh, to bake? Because someone may be watching this and be wondering, mm -hmm. how did you get 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 the skills, uh, regardless of you actually being passionate about uh, the whole baking aspect? All my skills I learned from YouTube. Mm -hmm. Then I did practice. I could watch something, did practice, then also think and come up with my own thing. Yeah. So in a good week, let's look at in a good week, how many cakes do you make and uh, how, how many go on sale? Uh, in a good week, you <laughs> might have orders every day uh -huh. sometimes, but um, let's say, you know, assuming on Monday, you might be getting two orders, mm. then you might miss on a Tuesday, you get on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I don't bake on Saturday because I go to church, so I solely don't do work on that day. But basically, business come and, you know, friends have been good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So what does one need to get started when it comes to a catering service, home-based business? Mm -hmm. Yes. It depends with the amount of money you have. Mm -hmm. Because now finance is key as, uh, in line with this business. Mm -hmm. If you can afford to get an oven, right, you can do that. Mm -hmm. You can get one. Mm -hmm. And the equipment necessary for you to pursue a uh, uh, the baking of cakes but also if you don't have money you can decide to buy a bigger jiko you work with it mm -hmm. so i think finances and the equipment to use are key for you to start from home okay. what did you start with How, uh, what was your initial capital what did mm -hmm. you own uh, uh well s just starting off the business as we had a, a cooker which also had an electric oven which we've been using at home every day mm -hmm. so that's what uh, as to, to, to the oven side, that's what I use. Mm -hmm. I bought tins around River Road. They were mm -hmm. very cheap. Mm -hmm. I bought nozzles mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, a few things that you may need to make a cake to come out good. So I, at first I spent around 8 to 10K mm -hmm. to buying the tins and uh, equipment because I already had an oven. Yeah. Does one need uh, like a, uh, the state to approve or like a government uh, license or, or operation or anything of the sort? Consider like, like for you, you are home based. Mm -hmm. How does that work? If, you know, it, it depends also with your clients. Mm -hmm. You don't want people to buy a cake from you. Maybe they f you get on bad hands. Mm -hmm. So it's good you get the license. However, if maybe you don't do that much and your clients are within you, you may decide to not to, but it's important to get the license for you to be on the safe side. Speaking about clients, mm -hmm. I'd like to find out how, uh, how was it possible for you uh, to just break through into the market and actually tap into your own clientele? How, how did that happen? How did you go about that? What happened before I started baking, mm -hmm. people used to invite me in their homes to go and cook, mm -hmm. maybe chapatis, if they are friends, <laughs> I just go and help, uh -huh. you know. So I had a very good connection to start with. So when I started as a business, I told them, hey, you know what, I'm doing this thing and I would like you to support me. Mm -hmm. So they indeed supported me. Then I started also posting what I've done in social media and it worked for me. Okay, still on matters about clients. Mm -hmm. Have you ever uh, worked with a uh, client who, who, who had unreasonable expectations mm -hmm. and with your, <laughs> with your time frame also? Uh -huh. And uh, how was the experience like? Well, okay, they happen. Clients are different. Mm -hmm. There are those who will tell you, I want this, 
but when you you actually present what they they told you to do they're like this is not what i ordered mm -hmm. and you're like but this is what you showed mm -hmm. me this is what you explained mm -hmm. so when i encountered such was um april towards the end of april mm -hmm. i had a worker in my you know wherever i be and he asked me i want you to do a cake for my love so i'm saying okay do you have an idea no choose for me so i did what i could do as if it were me if it was presented to me mm -hmm. i would say okay but i don't know what happened it was it was a little bit bitter about it but still he took it because he had paid so i couldn't redo Okay, yeah. so for anyone who is watching and uh, mm -hmm. they're looking forward probably to uh, head on to a bakery shop to get uh, maybe a cake and you're sitting from the other side of, <laughs> <laughs> of experiencing different uh, uh, clients, what would you tell this particular person who's going to see a, uh, a baker, like uh, how clear should they be when going for whatever they want? For me, I think it's important first when you have your clients, you understand what they want mm -hmm. so that you don't find yourself in so much friction with them. However, as a person, you may also want to give the best that you can. So that even if someone says no to that, you know from the bottom of your heart what I did mm -hmm. is best for me. Mm -hmm. Or it's the best uh, of interest that I could have added onto this particular thing. So it's good to have your skills you know, into perfection as much as you can. All right. Yeah. So during these times of the pandemic, uh, mm -hmm. majority of people and everyone is very keen on whatever they are eating and mm -hmm. how the just the process of preparedness. Mm -hmm. it, are, are there particular rules that you have probably with the people you work with mm -hmm. that ensure there's proper handling of food and following the government regulations just to make sure your clients are safe? Yeah, when we're doing clients order, I live with my sister-in-law. Mm -hmm. So she's probably the person who, who can help me around we do wear our gloves sometimes we you know not every time we'll wear masks mm -hmm. because we're actually at home so mm -hmm. we barely do that mm -hmm. but we wear gloves we wear a baking headgear mm -hmm. so that you are you are safe but we also handle our things with high hygiene so mm -hmm. Yourself. When it comes to this particular business and mm -hmm. just looking at it being home-based bakery, we have a couple of other businesses that are actually running. What makes uh, your your bakery uh, uh, different? What's the niche? And I know people are hearing us so talking about bakery, bakery. So you'll tell us the name of this bakery because uh, she's yet to officially launch it. Mm -hmm. So probably you can tell us what is the niche of uh, uh, your business. What's the different point of it? Yes. Uh, for me, what I do when you know, like when we're talking of uh, different types of cakes, mm -hmm. there are common recipes that everyone uses, but then it's up to me to find something that will make it taste a little bit different to stand out from the others. Mm -hmm. So I think that has been my strength. Okay. Yeah. All right, let's look at, uh, I know that you're very much, okay, uh, we already have some uh, couple of images on our screen. And uh, we get to look at this probably in a few. Oh, let's just check it out. Oh, so maybe you can take us to uh, uh, this particular cake. Mm -hmm. Okay, my, pro my director. Uh, pro take us through this, uh, Mandazis and how you prepare them. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Like my recipe? Just a brief description, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so what I do with this, I supply them to supermarkets. I give Istma, Home Choice and Tum Tum. Mm -hmm. So I, I bake as normal mandazi, but I have a secret ingredient to it, which makes secret. it... Secret, <laughs> okay, yeah. I see you. <laughs> <laughs> which makes it a little bit different, but it's not hard to work with it. You mm -hmm. need flour, mm -hmm. you need baking, mm -hmm. cinnamon if you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, the scones... Mm, for the scones, you also need flour, you need yeast, mm -hmm. you need... Um, Special ingredient there? Yes, <laughs> you also need pressed margarine, whichever you may choose. Uh -huh. You may also need a color. Oh, wow. Here we need yeah, whipping... So the amazing cake, mm -hmm. okay. Here we need whipping cream for, you know, the decor part of it. You need... These ones are silver balls. Mm -hmm. We also need flour to make it. We need eggs, we need milk, but it depends. Some clients will tell you, I don't want this, I don't want that. So mm -hmm. you will work with their specification. But basically, you will need eggs, you will need flour, mm -hmm. and you need margarine. Mm -hmm. And the essence of the cake you are using. 
Oh wow, for the young kids out there. So mm -hmm. let me ask, I can come with my own design and yeah. you can actually bring it to existence through my through a cake. Mm -hmm. If I can, if I, if I can't, I'll tell you I can't. Oh, you'll be honest like that. Yes. I like that. Take, like, take us through this uh, cake. Uh, this one you will get toppers from um, cake supplier shops mm -hmm. for you to make like now the Superman and these other things it's a mold you make from uh, fondant mm -hmm. for you to tap them in and also flour like now any other normal cake oh wow. yeah mm, it looks so yummy <laughs> <laughs> thank you so i know you're very much passionate about uh, your baker baking aspect catering yeah. and everything but how do you separate passion from actually looking at it in, on the aspect of business wise Oh, yeah, passion and business goes hand in hand. Because for you to run a, a successful business, then you have to be passionate about it. That's that is, when you will have to put your time in there to get returns. That is true. Yeah. But now looking at the business aspect of it, that's what I wanted to like get a little bit of difference because there's passion mm -hmm. and then there's the business side of it. <laughs> the uh, for the business side of, of it, mm -hmm. then we will just say that... Um, you need to be careful on your pricing mm -hmm. so that you get returns and also you need to be careful on what you are producing for you to, main, to maintain your customers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, for someone who is watching and wondering well, what is the minimal price for a cake, if I want a cake, probably you can give us in kgs mm -hmm. and the price uh, difference. And uh, yeah, people will be out there looking forward to get the yummy yummy cakes. <laughs> yeah. So it depends with the uh, with the essence we are using mm -hmm. or what kind of cake you want but minimal amount for one cage is 1300 it can go up to 2500 so it depends with what you want but minimal is 1300 sorry okay do you do you, do you make, actually meet your to pay your bills with this particular uh, business yes i it meets like everything i use i get to account for it Okay, by operating at uh, at home, mm -hmm. what are some of the costs that actually you got to cut cut down? And what's your advice for someone who's looking for to just start a business mm -hmm. uh, at their own space at home? So, what are the, some of the operational business costs that you got to cut off? At home, you don't need rent, so and rent is expensive here in Nairobi, mm -hmm. so that's a, a big saving. Mm -hmm. You also don't have tax, mm -hmm. nobody's following you like you need to pay monthly tax of mm -hmm. what you're selling. Mm -hmm. You also don't have that friction, like I'm supposed to close at this time, so you have all the time to do what you want. Okay. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Let's speak about, let's look at the pros and the cons of uh, the home-based uh, catering business. I'd like to find out uh, what are some of, your, of, the, of the achievements that you've, you've had and that you look back and you'll be like, you know, I'm so proud of myself, you know. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and also you can look at challenges that you've faced since you started uh, officially in, uh, in, the baking, in the baking industry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. For baking, I think the greatest achievement I met, someone gave me a, a design of a cake. Mm -hmm. And I was like, can I do this? But then I did it and she loved it. So that t t thrilled my heart. And from her, I got three clients. Actually, she's Alice. I'm mm -hmm. thankful. Mm -hmm. okay. She could be watching. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's the greatest achievement I met so far. And I've been able to equip my bakery now to standards that I can go outside there and start up mm -hmm. like any other baking business. For challenges, uh, sometimes uh, there, there's no uh, power and maybe you are baking mm -hmm. at home, so no generator for you. That means that cake will go to our west. Mm. And uh, with family, you need to bake for them too. You know, you are baking a cake, they need a piece of something. So that's a challenge too. <laughs> they don't understand it's business uh, sometimes. They yeah, want sometimes they don't understand that they're like, if you are making for someone, you need to make for us. <laughs> yeah, so, so that's you have to do double work. <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. let's look at um, on August uh, 16th. Something mm -hmm. big is happening. Tell us more about that. Yeah, um... I've made a brand of the bakery already. Mm -hmm. I've done the required, you know, things that are to be met by the government. Mm -hmm. So on 16th, I'll be opening my space mm -hmm. in CBD for baking. And I'll name it, I don't know if it's good to say right now, but I'll say anyway. Okay. I'll name it Fresh Fest Cuisine. Repeat that again. Fresh Fest Cuisine. 
fresh first fresh first cuisine yeah okay but we ain't going to do just baking we'll do baking and food mm -hmm. so it will be an industry uh, it will be an industry that deals much of cakes yes but we also we will also be offering food services okay. yeah to, the, to target actually different occasion and events yes. for your clientele uh, yes okay what would be your advice for someone who's, who wants to start a business uh, it could be a home-based uh, catering business or any other form of business just back at their comfort of their uh, of their home just operating back at home what would be your advice for that particular person uh, never give up pursue what you want mm -hmm. if you've got you know if you've got so much determination towards what you want to achieve mm -hmm. then you want to start and don't wait to start big just start from where you are if you don't have the right tools god will provide for you even as you continue but now you don't want to sit and let me achieve so much before i pursue this mm -hmm. just to pursue wherever you are mm -hmm. if you have a jiko you you know how to bake use it to bake it will work out for you start from where you are and it what is. you have mm -hmm. okay so uh, i'll let you uh, share your social media handles and how people can reach out to you make mm -hmm. orders uh for their uh, for their particular cuisines that they want mm -hmm. uh, from dolin morasa this is your chance give us a social media handle so that mm -hmm. you can follow you and get to know more about your work well uh you'll find me on facebook mm -hmm. at dolin's empire okay you can use the phone okay yes. you'll find me at facebook mm -hmm. at dolin's empire mm -hmm. you will get a number of things that i run on that particular page i also have my own handle where i post at dolin yambati also at instagram at dolin yambati but at instagram i don't post for business but mm -hmm. i'm working on a page mm -hmm. which should be out by next week at fresh first cuisine okay so i'll be updating at instagram all right so when you launch officially mm -hmm. we can find you on instagram yes at fresh first cuisine okay yeah. there you have it make sure you follow uh Dolim on matters pertaining uh getting to know more about our business that is on a home-based catering business services and just know how to go about it if you have interest in that particular area and if you want to order some amazing cakes she's the person to look out for at michelle shira is where you can find me across all my social media platform followers across all social uh, handle that is at y254 channel coming up we'll be having an interview that looks into the the film industry i had a sit down with this amazing uh, young man from uh, glide lakes and uh, let's look again at this particular interview and get to learn more on matters of film be right back